And how you guys doing? Welcome to the show. This is Rockin' with Hollywood, baby. This show is usually done on our radio station, WMMRDB Rockford. But right now, we are testing out some new software. We're on multiple platforms right now. We're testing out uh, the software for this weekend, the whole nine yards. How you doing, Mark? How you doing, Randy? Good vibes, baby. Uh, if you're on our Discord server, you to come on over here to the Rockin' with Hollywood show. The only thing I can't do is throw music out there because half these platforms uh, uh, cut me off at the knees and the whole nine yards. Today, and this is for you guys that don't know how this show works when we're on the radio, it is not just biker related. It has to do with everything that comes to my demented mind. I get to be who I am, what I am, and what I like thinking about on my radio station. You can download the app over on Google Play, WMMRDB uh, is Insane Throttle Radio. That's how you get to that app. You can join Discord, listen to it in the radio room, or on Insane Throttle TV. How is everybody doing? Look at that, man. Facebook all up in here, man. Uh, Harley, Kenneth, uh, we got all our uh, Dark Soul. We got usually the independent writers coming in here. Rock and roll, man. Holy cow. We're on D Live TV and everywhere else. Wild on 2, if you are... Listening up, I'll turn it down for you, John. Uh, it, it's working fine, man, so go for it. It's uh, what I see anything anyway. Uh, so, Tales from the Tattoo Shop. Yes, this is something that everybody's been asking me to do on the Rockin' with Hollywood show over on the radio. And those that listen in all the time, they hear little bits and pieces of when I owned a couple tattoo shops. And they always find it interesting because there's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes that you might not know when you go get a tattoo. This uh, being, uh, you know, little party time, if you will. Yeah, the parties we used to have. Anyway, own two of them up to a recent couple of years ago. Cause what I like doing is buying business, build them up, selling them. That's something I love doing. It's kind of like the barter system. You know, you, you challenge yourself to maybe you put something small out there and see how big you can get it. That's kind of what it was with me in the tattoo shops. I started in 94 when it was just bikers, when it was just convicts, and military personnel got that stuff. I started so long ago that we used to smoke in the shop while we were tattooing. There was none of this, uh, you got to be clean this, clean that. Maybe that's why hepatitis C went around as bad as it did. My goodness gracious, it was bad back in them days, I got to say. But that's the way it was back then. There was a shop here in Chicago, great guy, he's dead now, but his name was Fat Joe, uh, and if you guys know, if you're from Chi-Town, or you'll know who I'm talking about, Jay Dragon and all that. He was the, the one to be around. It wasn't like there is today with tattoos on every damn corner you to get a, you know at a shop. His was one of the only ones in the city of uh, Chicago. And it's funny, in Chicago, it was either north side, west side, south side, depending on where you would go and get your tattoos. But he was one of the good ones. Now, back then, it wasn't like it is now. These kids can throw some damn ink, man. They sling it. When I first started, though, it was you go in pick it off a wall, and then we just copied it. Tat, you know, here, pick that off of this piece of flash, and we'll just put it on your skin. Wasn't too artistic back then. So it was 94 when I started. Worked my way, worked my way, then got into owning my own. 
the first shop was, you know, if you ever see some of my videos on the garage, you'll see our original sign aberration, which means out of the norm, out of the norm. And boy, were we out of the norm. I can tell you that 100%. I believed in having an environment geared more towards when I first started. Now, if I did the things that I did back then when we had it, I'd be in court and all that kind of shit. You know, we had this apprenticeship program where I treated the apprentices just like I was treated when I was coming up. And this had to do, you know what? We had something called apprentice baseball. Now, one thing in the tattoo industry you got to understand is it's very damn dangerous. Meaning, you can catch a lot of stuff you don't want to catch. I'm basically a germaphobe now because of that. You know, you have China Doll, if she ever comes in, the room and then she's like coughing or sneezing I was, uh, i'm like right away get away man i don't want your cooties or any of that but i think that's because of what i faced at two and in pearson especially in the early days see illinois didn't go to all these tattoo laws you hear about now until 2010 i think it was before then anybody can just walk in man you had teenagers as long as they had their parents with you you can get a tattoo we didn't care we were in a tattoo whoever i was kind of happy with the new regulations that came up because like i said before then we'd have the client in the chair both smoking it was pretty unsanitary i gotta admit but hey us older guys lived through it we didn't catch nothing i remember when we didn't even use gloves. Yeah, it's how long ago is it? Man, I feel freaking old. I am. I'm an old sucker, man. I'm looking at myself right now and uh, saying, damn, man, you got gray. I'm just as bad as China Dow, man. China Dow, she's all blonde, okay? At least she used to be. And then I look at her now. Because she's letting, you know, she don't color her hair as much as she used to. She's a natural sandy blonde. The other day I'm looking and saying, well, damn, man, you're getting gray. Are you like going to be a silver fox or something that I got to trade you in for a younger model? What the hell's going on with you? You know, us men, we can be gray because we're good looking. You don't want to sit there and say, damn, man, my wife's like a silver fox, man. You ever see Golden Girls? B, I think her name is B. You know, that big raspy voice. And I'm sitting here, I looked at there the other day, and that image came to my mind. As It's like one of them freaking nightmares. You know, she during the morning hooch, she's over here to my left. Which, by the way, that's Monday through Friday. You can hear it live or you can hear it on the replay on uh, the podcast right after the Biker News. But I look at her and I, I just imagine this face from the Golden Girls. It scared the hell out of me. I don't know if I'm going through a midlife crisis, what it is. But it scared the shit out of me. I was like... Man, this hot-ass woman, she got gray hair. Now, I have to admit, she keeps hardwood floors. So I say to myself, I have to imagine, if she kept carpet down there, is it going to be natural, which means salt and pepper? I got to know these things. It's very important to me. See, I'm one of them guys... I'm judgmental. I'm sorry. I'm a judge. Okay. I believe in prime beef. I don't want no soybean burger. I want a nice New York steak. I want some good pasta. I don't want the poor man's pasta. I don't want macaroni and cheese and ketchup on it. So when I looked at her, she had gray all over. I was like, this this ain't happening. Not now. See, I'm allowed to be gray. Men are allowed to be gray. But not a woman. 
And boy, do my women always get mad at me. See, we call them vipers in the Discord room. Because, gentlemen, I'm going to tell you what. Women, they will use a Jedi mind trick on you to subdue you into their will. So that's later on. I'll talk about that later on. Because you know what? We're on a whole bunch of different platforms here. And I believe in a movement. And my movement is easy. It's freaking actually logical. I would like to see men back where they belong. I like to see them sitting on their throne like the old man upstairs said. But we got away with that. Men now, they don't have no balls. So anyway, I was looking at her, and I seen all this stuff. Then I flashed back to the days of the tattoo shop. When she was young, she was vibrant. And I have to say, a bigger asshole then than she is now. But uh, you know what? It's hard because... You know, these women with bipolar moments, man, you never know. You got to watch them. You got to watch out. I opened these tattoo shops. One was uh, on the state line. The other one was in the middle of a cornfield. Wasn't my best choice, you know, even though I made the money. But the problem with it was I opened up this place in a freaking one-horse town, as you call it. A bunch of hickabillies. A bunch of yahoos, a bunch of friggin' sit there and yell at me because I'm not in church on Sundays. I opened it in their town, right on a main road. So they pissed me off a little bit. You know, they throw that judgmental stuff on you. So what do I do? Being an ass like I am, I decided for my advertisement, to put on the window a big ass mouth with a tongue sticking out and uh, it had a you know it had a piercing i guess they didn't like that too much so i got round and round and round we go with this town oh boy did they hate me and i couldn't understand why because right next door i had a biker bar right next to me which gave me a lot of clientele. We had great bike nights over there, by the way. But it was, hey, it was the tattoo shop. And what were they pissed about? It was pissed about this big ass mouth with a tongue. You know, it looked like a woman, uh, you know, about to perform her womanly duties. Which a lot of women nowadays don't perform like they should. And I think you men need to take control of this. But anyway. They haul me into this big meeting, trying to shut me down. But, you know, I'm a little more business savvy as them. So I beat that. And then, I don't know if it was out of spite or what. I trained my wife to be a piercer. I'm a master piercer. I'd pierce anything you want. So I trained her to be a piercer. Had a real good crew over there. You know, fun, partying, all that kind of stuff. Well, I think that karma came back and really bit my ass. I don't know if it's because I had an apprentice out in front of the shop. You remember that uh, one... uh, it was like a popular thing, man, like a dance move or dance song. But I had him doing it out there. I was, you know, they were playing it on the box and stuff like that. He looked like a real idiot, you know, like an apprentice should look like an idiot. I don't know if it was him or I don't know if it was China Dow, but they send in, and I'm no kidding now. She probably did in her grave right now. She's so old. Not kidding here sends in an 80-year-old woman with the nastiest smelling 
fish between her legs. I'm talking rotten right to the core. I thought I seen cobwebs, okay? It's that old. She comes in. I guess she's having a crisis. I can't even call it a midlife, man. This sucker was old. Old piece of meat. And says, I want my hood pierced. I said, what? I want my, my, my I want my hood pierced. If you guys don't know what that is, go look it up. But it has to do with something in the middle, if you know what I mean. I look at China now. And China Dow says, no, nah, ain't happening. I was like, well, wait a second, man. You're the piercer, you know, or have one of the other ones do it. I had, it had to be five employees over there. Tell me to go to hell. They're not doing it. I was like, what are you talking about? All it is is just a piercing. That's when it came and kicked me in the ass. Well, if it's just the piercing, then why ain't you doing it? I knew at that minute, once I said that, I was going to come back and screw me. So I said, okay, I'll be the bigger man. Because you got these other ones running in every direction here. And I'm saying to myself, you know what? I'm the owner of this place. What the hell, man? Anyway, they take her into the back. You know, we had the Pearson room in the back. With these big pull shades. All I hear when I'm walking back there is a bunch of laughter. Bunch of laughter. And what I can tell you was, I have PTSD to this day. I was traumatized by it. She pulled them suckers down. And all I got is, woof, of smell. It was worse than a fish market. Tuna doesn't even smell this bad. This was like decades old tuna smell. And then I look down. It's like 1970s down there. Woof. All the hair pops on me. So not only do I have to deal with the fish smell, I got to deal with the afro. It was like, you know what? I should have kept a pick on me just to get down there to see where I had to pierce. And again, they're all laughing at me. So I'm thinking to myself, okay. I got you. I got you. You know, I, you know what? I'm a pro at getting payback. I'm a pro at it. So I kept that in the back of my head, especially for the guy who was the piercer, who was supposed to pierce this broad. So I get down there. I, I weave through the, you know, the Amazon forest. Then I, I, I swear to God, I seen spiders or something coming out of there. I did. I think I saw them. I pierced her. I was like, you know what? I'm good at customer service and stuff. Uh, uh, the problem was when she left, I had that tuna smell in my shop for an over an hour. All I know is when I walked out, she left. The others came out of the room and started giggling. Ha! <laughs> Yeah, that was China Dow, uh, the one that was supposed to be doing it. But I swear to God, I've seen spiders. So keeping this in the back of my head, I decided because, you know, I knew a lot of radio people. I had one of their DJs come out to do a live remote. And there was a contest going on. And I looked at this apprentice who was laughing at me. I said, okay, payback time. I go over, talk to the DJ. I tell her, this is what we're going to do on air. And this happened on air. One of the biggest <laughs> radio stations in uh, uh, Northern Illinois. 
I said, go into the back room. She went to the back room. You know, she carried her equipment, all that stuff. I pull him back there. I said, here's what we're going to do, and we're going to do it on air. You're going to get a tattoo on air of her name. She's going to autograph it for you, and we're going to tattoo it on you. Here this dummy is. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to do it. Yeah, 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 let's do it. I said, okay, so you agree. Well, yeah, I'll get tattooed, whatever, man, put it anywhere. At that point, he was busted. You just said, put that tattoo anywhere. The same person who was laughing at me when I had to pierce this hood of this 80-year-old tuna smelling that's decades old broad. That was you. I said, okay, we're going to do this. I look at the DJ. I was like, you, you ready to go on air? What's up? She said, yes. And I looked over to the apprentice. I said, you ready to get tattooed? Well, yes. So I gave the pen or the marker, whatever it was, to the DJ. And I looked at him. I said, guess where you getting this sucker? Well, where? I said, you're getting on your pecker. You said anywhere you want. You got to get an autograph, man. And his mouth dropped. I was like, you know what? We agreed on this. You got to get a tattooed. My God, I never freaking seen anybody freaking turn white in their life. Because I'm thinking payback time here. And here he is. He knows he's just an apprentice. If you want to keep on going, you're going to do something. So she autographs it for him. And he starts getting the tattooed right there on air, crying like a little broad. It brought such joy to my heart after being ridiculed. I didn't hear the end. And I still don't hear the end of the time I had a pierce that old broad. I still don't, I can't get rid of it. China Dow, the bipolar broad she is, anytime we would get into something and she knows it pushes my buttons, she would say, remember that time? Yeah, you remember. You remember. You remember that time you pierced that old broad? It's like, man, I'm going to punch you in the mouth. <laughs> it's like she, it's like that, what, that uh, Cobra Kai thing. When is it time that I've paid enough to stop hearing it? It makes me giggle. <laughs> it makes me giggle. So anyway, I finally turned around, made a lot of money on that one, and I said, okay, let's go back to the other shop and make some more money. Because I like green. And, uh, you know, my guys on uh, Discord heard of this one. But, you know, again, I'm on all these platforms right now. So I might as well tell you. I pride myself on being a good guy. Especially when it comes to kids. So I'm tattooing this kid's mother. Now he's a little slow. little slow. Uh, that kind of slow. And he's looking on my wall. I have the Chicago Bears construction hat on there. All I know is he's excited. He took it off the wall. I was playing around with it. I got finished tattooing his mother. And I look at him. I said, go ahead and take it. And he put it on. He was all happy, all go lucky and stuff like that. I thought I did a good deed. Until they left. Until they left. I had China Dow and this another guy come up to me and said, you know what you just did, didn't you? And I'm sitting here like, what, man? I thought I did a good deed. You just gave a retard a helmet. 
And I'm sitting there thinking, damn, man, I just gave a retard a helmet. I thought I was doing something nice. So me and China Dow were driving and stuff like that down the road. And I see this kid. You know, he's a little mentally handicapped. You know one of them. He's running around with a helmet on. And I felt like a bungholio because I gave this retard a helmet. And I couldn't lift that down. See, I put myself in all these situations. It's unreal. Thinking I'm doing something good, turns out I give a retard a helmet. I'm taking customer service. Next thing you know, I'm piercing some 80 old bags hood. And it, it, it's a traumatizing experience. So going back to apprentice baseball, this kind of stuff, well, I don't know if it goes on in shops anymore. I really don't. Because like I said, it's a whole new breed of people in there, man. I'm like, you know what? Not only am I old with the way I think with uh, the biker stuff, but I'm old with this tattoo stuff. So, me being a germaphobe, the biggest things you got to watch out for when you're tattooing is hepatitis C. All the hepatitises, man. And if you're a piercer, you got to watch out for, you know, the AIDS. That stuff don't leave you, man. It's like luggage. It's like luggage you had 50 years ago, you try to get rid of, and it finds its way back. So, that's what it's like. I'm very, very anal about this safety stuff because I don't want these kids getting sick. Actually, Fat Joe, he had it. So I used to quiz him on a lot of safety stuff. Well, guess what? When you got it wrong, you got it wrong. So with the males, see, I couldn't do it with the females. But with the males... I would make them reach down, grab their ankles, and I would play apprentice baseball. I would look at China and say, give me that broom. I, you know what? I don't know how many brooms we went through. And I teed off. They got the answer right the next time. Fun stuff. And that, you know, after that, I made them draw 300 pages of roses and blah, 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 blah. That's just some of the stuff they went through. Another time, and this is just stuff goes on, you know, tales of the tattoos, if you will. I remember there was this kid named Barney, rest in soul. You know what? He was a good soul, rest in peace, man. Meningitis, he died of. Sad state of affairs. Anyway. We are all screwing around. You know, they were doing their thing. And, you know, the apprentices used to set up our stations. And he was pouring this ink in. And I had some of the guys that I rode with rush in there, say there was a robbery, and start popping off caps. You know, not real shit, but it sounded like it. Next thing I know, there is purple ink all over this kid. He dives to hide. Everybody is. They're diving. It was fun. It made me giggle. He comes up, and he's got nothing but purple ink on him. Well, guess what? We started calling him Barney. That's why you do not want to give me any ammunition to get you. Now, Big Smitty... Big Smitty's riding. He just has a video out. And you put lipstick on yourself. You look like a broad. Okay? You look like Bluto with lipstick. You can guarantee I'm going to come up with a name for you. You did it yourself. There is going to be a road name for you. <laughs> it's it's just the way it is buddy uh by the way guys don't forget to uh subscribe to the youtube channel as well as our other stuff 
boy, are we everywhere now, man. Uh, don't forget to go into that uh, Facebook, uh, Biking and Brotherhood, and great stuff right there. So anyway, me and my mind, we work kind of messed up. Uh, Mark, damn Hollywood, worried about your PTSD, seeing what you saw to pierce the old lady's hood. You know what? I'm not a strong dude, man. I think that's why when I look at China now with her gray hair coming out, it's like, is that what I got to look forward to? That's why I always tell people, don't get married. Don't do it. Lease it. That's what I say. Lease it. Because once you put that wedding ring on, you own that. And you own everything that comes with it. I don't like that. So when you lease it, you can trade it in for something else. So if she becomes looking like that, I'm stuck with her. You young kids better listen to me on this. Don't get married. Be new age. Be that new revolution crap that you're always talking about. Because if you lease it, when they get 80 years old, you to trade it in for somebody maybe 50s model. You know what I mean? The problem with those old guys... Is I can't see going a couple years. I got a lot of friends that will date like 10, 20 years younger than them. And I'm sitting here thinking, man, it's like dating a daughter or something. What's wrong with you people? Like, you know what? Everybody's idol is Hugh Hefner. That dude was 90, shriveled up old Willie, and he was getting 20 year old blondes. Now, we all know. That he couldn't get it up in his 90s unless he had, you know, you know, 100 pills of freaking Viagra. I don't know. But here he is married to a 20-year-old broad. You think he'd known, hey, dude, this broad's only after your money, man. That's all she's after. No joke. But I think, you know, maybe he had to keep appearances and stuff like that. I don't know. Pretty weird business, man, that. But why would you want to date somebody that's like 10, 20 years younger? I don't get it. So back to the tattoo stuff, because my mind, it, it wanders. It always says, what's the next angle? You got to hustle out there. You got to do your game. I said, oh, I got one. Oh, boy, do I got one. <laughs> I had this spot next to the tattoo shop. It was pretty big. You know, it had a bunch of rooms. I was like, you know what? I like partying. I like having fun. Because one of the biggest things you'll know when you work in a tattoo shop is you're going to get groupies. Now, what do I mean by groupies? You're going to have all these chicks hanging around trying to pull your wad so you to get them a tattoo because they're cheap. They don't want to pay you. They want to exchange services, if you will. So you get a lot of these groupies. And I used to warn my artists about this all the time. China Dow probably can tell you about a couple of them. Anyway, I said, okay. I got this space over here. I'm going to open a club. But it ain't that kind of club. See, I, I go for stuff that makes the money. So we opened this swingers club. And boy, did the money roll in. Anyway, it was a fun deal. You know, we had Halloween parties. I remember one time I had my brother that's DJing. You know, he was one of the best DJs in Chicago on the radio bullshit and all that stuff. So he comes, does it for his brother. And I said, you know what? Out of the kindness of your own heart, you did this event for me for free. I said, you know what? I got to pay you back. 
And he looks at me. He says, well, how are you going to pay me back? I, uh, you know, I don't want no money from you. And I look over and I did that little finger thing to abroad. And the next thing I know, you know, because he was supposed to be DJing all day and night for me. She takes him in the room and they don't come out for a couple hours. And I'm sitting here thinking, you know, I thought she was just going to bob her head a little bit and get done. And But no, he's in there for hours at a time. And then China Dow, with her freaking brain, you know, it's hard with her sometimes. Hard with her sometimes. She takes my damn gynecological table. Yes, it had stirrups and everything. That I used for Pearson, which means I didn't use it after this. You know, that cost me all kinds of money. Thank you. And she starts putting women in this chair for their birthdays. And I'm saying to myself, what the hell are you doing on my stuff? Here I am tattooing, making a little money on the side with that. And she has broads up in this gynecological table, but ass naked, baby. See, China down know how to party. She knows how to throw a party, man. She's a legend in this stuff. Legend. She threw one of the best Halloween parties I've ever seen. Anyway. So for the birthday for the women, this was a women's thing. They would get whipped cream, chocolate, and all the women would line up. And have lunch, if you know what I mean. I never heard so much satisfaction in my life. It kind of makes me jealous. No, no, no. It pisses me off. When you have a woman that can eat a taco better than you. It gives you a complex a little bit, don't you think? It gives me a complex. You know, you have this broad, this bang, boom, yeah, walking up to you. Next thing you know, she's not walking up to you, but she's walking up to your old lady. And I'm sitting here thinking, what the hell, man? She goes for you, not me. What the, what's wrong with this business? Next thing I know, she takes her. Over into the corral, I used to call it. You know, I took this little white picket fence ideal and I made a corral out of it. She takes them in there. Now with the corral, the guys can't go in. All I know is I seen so much bodily fluid flying through the air. It kind of made me jealous. There's nothing worse, men, than an old lady who can, you know, eat that taco better than you. I don't know what it is, but women get drove nuts by another woman. You know what? I, I, I correct myself. I'd have to say, you know what? I do see why. Because us men are ugly, man. Look at us. We look like apes. We some ugly bastards. I actually don't know how women deal with us. We got beer bellies, gray hair, tattoos everywhere. And you're damn right. If you get a chance or they get a chance, I jump on that girl too. She's at. See the problem though, that I had actually I had a stalker and I have to admit, I have to admit she's a bomb ass stalker, man. <laughs> you know, if China dolls watching, she probably gonna kick my ass. She bomb though. Bomb. See, I get to play too. You know, we had a couple, you know, threesomes, myself, wife and her, but she got a little stalker ish and wanted to get more. So, you know, Hollywood has to give her the bone. You know, you got to keep these women satisfied, man. That's the only thing I'd give you advice, men, about. 
now a lot of you probably won't have that problem because it's you know a stalkerish thing you're probably butt ugly but when you have a personality like i do women want to be around that i'm not gloating i'm not gloating well yeah i am anyway it's probably a hugh hefner kind of reason they do it who knows but she got a little close I do not believe in emotions. I don't believe in it. Because if you're doing something like this and you get emotional, you're going to screw everything up. Everything. By the way, before I forget, Wild On 2 is going to have Tia and Jess take over Saturday right before myself and Black Dragon get going on that interview that is saturday china Dow will actually be off of work on sunday so i'm gonna bring china Dow on the neutral zone we're gonna have all kinds of fun see china Dow likes talking shit about me and i don't find it right i don't find it right now a lot of people is gonna say well you're a chauvinist pig no i believe in what the old man upstairs taught me that I am the king of the castle. I sit on the throne. You can't use Jedi mind tricks on me. You weak-minded men may be able to, but not me. I don't allow that kind of business. It's a very foreign concept, I know. It's a very foreign concept, especially nowadays. It's like, you know, I look at some of these men, and they're wearing girly pants. What the hell's with all the girly pants? It was bad enough, it used to be, where they hung off your butt. I don't know if they still do that. I don't know. But these new cats, they're wearing jeans where, you remember in the old days, in the 80s, you, you probably know this. They used to lay on the bed. And use a pair of pliers to pull their zipper up, these broads. I'm afraid that's the thing we're seeing now with these men. Why do you think I call them girly men? Because they got to lay on the bed to pull their pants up. So we're seeing a lot of this stuff. So this kind of concept is probably pretty weird for them. Pretty weird. And by the way, ladies... What is it with you people liking girly men? I don't get it. What do you see in them? Geo, now the guys were the girl, girly uh, pants that hand off. <laughs> yes, you guys can ask questions now. I'm in that section uh, of the uh, show. <laughs> and remember, this show is usually on Discord, our radio station. I just had to try out this new software to see how it worked. I can't play any music or anything like that uh, because of terms of service. Even though I have a license to play this stuff, YouTube and all them won't let me do it. Facebook, they'll just like say, no, you're done. Screw you. So every Thursday, Rocking with Hollywood, we get in a lot more in depth. I'm actually tame right now compared to what I usually am. But that's Thursday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on the radio. Uh, if one of you numbnuts, uh, one of my people can put the Discord server link in there, I'd appreciate that. Uh, Noofy Rock, uh, is that why you sleep on the couch? Actually, no. No. Mm -mm. What I do is because I bought an old ass house with a lot of rooms. Hollywood gets his own room. Are you crazy? I live with a bipolar chick, man. Do you think I want my freaking throat cut? Are you stupid? I say some outlandish shit. As she says, I have no damn filter. Are you crazy? I'm going to sleep in the same room as her? Are you a moron? Hell no, man. This broad openly says that if I go on the life support system, 
you know, where they unplug you and shit, that she's going to say, I don't want to live that way and kill my ass. She, she threatens me all the time. I'm going to kill you. So why in the hell would I want to sleep with her? Are you crazy? I want to be in G and get the hell out of there while it's safe. I want to blow. I want to go and get out of there. And I, you know what? A lot of you older men I'm kind of worried about. You know, now that we're on blow and go here, I'm worried. I'm worried about your health. That's why I started a movement as I did. And that movement means you go in there, get your business done, couple minutes, get the hell out of there. Because if you go any longer, you're going to have a heart attack on me. And I don't want to see you have a heart attack. A lot of you good people, man, out there. I got a lot of great subs. So why have a heart attack when you can get in there, get it done, get the hell out of here? Well, I want to have my woman satisfied. Well, what? You're the man, yes? Why do you need to satisfy her? You're the one going to have a heart attack. See, she picks on me all the time. She does. Says, I haven't got this or that. Okay, I get it. You know, you need a little, you know, help. That's why I bought you the purple monster. You know, this big thing, she can use it in the bathroom. And it goes like 20 speeds, man. It's like, you know what? I have to correct myself. Something, somebody like China can give you use a 48 horsepower Briggs and Stratton, as they said today in the Discord. And she still wouldn't be satisfied, okay? So you wonder why I go blow and go. So I buy her this thing. I said, okay, there you go. You can take care of yourself. Boy, that came back and bit me in the butt. It bit me so hard, I am still speechless. Still speechless. And she knows that I can't let this rest. I can't let it rest. Because it traumatized me again. I'm always getting traumatized, and you people think I'm the uh, male chauvinist pig? No. I lived through nightmares here. Not only did I have to pierce that 80-year-old's kunta, I, you know, I said, you know what? Because I went to bed earlier that day feeling tired, feeling sick. So I went to bed too early. And you know what happens when you go to bed too early? You get up too early. I think it was around 2 o'clock. I start walking up the stairs, you know, walking up, minding my own business, going there, drain the weasel, and I look over, and you guys heard this on the morning who, I look over, and my door's closed, and there's a little gradient down there where the dog's looking out, I'm sitting here thinking, why is she like the dogs in here? Not thinking because I was sleeping, you know, I was uh, just trying to wake myself up. And I walk in. She has her legs spread open. Uh, and the look on her face, I, she still can't, I still can't get over my mind. Like she was busted when she was a kid or something. And all she could say was, she holds up the purple monster. The batteries are dead. That's all she could say. And I'm sitting here thinking, you just got caught. Which I wouldn't have mind anyway. You know, I already knew she was doing it. Don't bug me. Use your purple monster is what it's there for. So, But the look on her face was priceless. And I noticed she ain't in the chat room right now because I'm probably going to get my ass. You, you know what? You said it twice already. You're on YouTube. You're on Facebook. You're on Twitch, Restream, all that stuff. And you brought that up. Why did you do that? That's what I'm going to hear. That's what Hollywood's life is. 
So she's going to blame me because I opened the door. She spread eagle playing with this purple monster. It's not like I haven't seen this before. But, but, she was scandalous in doing this. Hollywood didn't get his. That's no fair. Hollywood gets his first. Then you go play with Purple Monster. I don't know if that's why she was like, uh, 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 uh. All she could have did, all she did was, it's out of batteries. It didn't work. <laughs> she's sitting there trying to make me believe that she didn't bust because the batteries were gone. No, you're gonna, you were sitting there playing with that sucker for an hour. You're gonna have me believe that you didn't nut. Get out of here with that. Who uh, do you think I'm that dumb? That's why. You have towels all over the place because you squirted it all across the room. But here you are. The batteries died. Nothing happened. Get out of here. You're crazy. China chat. There's China chat. Let's see if this works like. Uh... Hey, it does work like that. China chat says, well, Hollywood doesn't do it. So I got to take care of myself. Which, you know what? I, I, I. I don't blame you. But to say that it didn't work, I didn't get nothing. You lied. Why'd you lie like that? You can't fool me. You can't. You're sitting there for an hour. You're going to tell me you're going to waste all that energy and nothing came? Get out of here. I ain't even that stupid. New fee rock. Here comes the knock on the door. Wait for it. Or she'll probably get me back tomorrow morning. Because what she usually does is listen to my rocking with Hollywood at nighttime. On a Thursday. And Friday morning, she's right on my ass. That's China Dow, man. She's probably in the Discord server right now yelling at me. I don't have the Discord server on right now. So what she does is go in there and yell into the camera to give her replies. Uh, let's see here. Not <laughs> Geo. She claiming it was dead and no, I didn't. You're a liar. You're a liar. Uh, what else we got here? Let's play around with you guys for a minute here. Process, Grave Digger, and Tooth Chipper are in the shop. The vein is on first. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Bellman, you could have gone and got yours then. No, then I would have had to work. Why would I want to work? That ain't cool. You know, a man just wants to sit there, lay back, enjoy himself, get his reward for dealing with these women. That's all I wanted to do. I don't want to go in there and work. What are you, crazy? That's nuts. Uh, let's see here. What do you got? Uh, Geo, man. Geo, how you doing? China going to have some copper top babies. No, what she's probably going to do is... She threatened us once. She said, you know, I, I, you know what? I admit that she's probably mad at me because, you know, I have this habit, okay? I have a habit of getting up early in the morning or 5 o'clock in the morning and start the day. And when I walk in the bedroom, she always has her mouth open when she's sleeping, and me being Hollywood, I'm sitting here thinking, you stupid. You're doing that around me. So what I do is, you know, I have to go over there. And I have to open the ash cheeks and get about an inch or two away from her, you know, face. And I let out the biggest fart. Now, she's a dead sleeper. And all you see on her is... With her tongue. 
<laughs> so after that happens, she wants to kill me. And she is not, you know what? She'll let you know she wants to kill me sometimes because I just go over the edge. See, on our radio program, nothing's off limits. We share everything with our audience. Usually not on this one, but yeah, everything with our audience. No locks on door. <laughs> uh, Geo, damn, give her pink eye for sure. I don't know, man. You know what? I don't know if it's, don't you call her a poor thing? Do you know what I got to pay deal with all day? Are you crazy? You know what? She got you guys damn fooled is what she got. She got you all fooled thinking that she, oh, I'm always picking on her. No, it's her. She starts it like every woman starts things. Uh, let's see here. Dear Lord, are these tickets to Algonia refundable? <laughs> you know what? It, it gets crazy, man, when you go party with old guys. Uh, hey, how you doing, Rebel Joe from Quebec? You know, Quebec, Canada, that's where you, like, speak French, right? Because, you know what? I got a bone to pick with you guys. This speaking French stuff, you know what? I bastardize the English language. I really do. I kill it. Yesterday night, I call, I looked at uh, China, and I was like, you know, because she said something. I was like, what are you, the Webster Dictionary or something? But you guys speak in French. You know, the only thing I know that's French is French fries. And I get in trouble with French a little bit because I always, you know what? They got hair under their armpits, some of them. And I think that's, I don't want to do Sasquatch. Shave your armpits. But anyway... We have a crazy Canadian. We call her the DNV. And to know what the DMV is all about, just watch last uh, week's episode on the independent writers, uh, the culture that uh, changed the motorcycle scene or some crap like that, because I had to rename it because of YouTube. And you'll find out about the DMV. Now, I heard... A story this morning. How she was trying to teach somebody how to eat a banana. Now, her way of eating a banana, I guess it's the Canadian way, was to lick up and down and move it around. It's like, do you women ever think about anything other than sex? I have no clue. My God, that's crazy with you people. But anyway, we're coming to the close of the show right now. Don't forget to uh, download us on Roku. Uh, we're on Amazon Fire as well. It looks like we had a pretty good stream. Uneventful today. Uh, don't forget. Saturday, we're supposed to have that interview with the international president of the Vagos and uh, Carlo. I mean, Wild on too. He's going to have Tia and Jess on. And on Sunday, you're going to have China Dow on. Uh, Bedlam. Uh, yes. You know, if you guys want to know what the raffle's all about, just ask Bedlam. <laughs> So, anyway, guys, appreciate you uh, dropping by, having fun with me tonight. Thanks for letting me take uh, the software for a ride. I'll be back with Rockin' with Hollywood next week right on our radio station. Download the Google app, uh, Insane Throttle Radio. Go to InsaneThrottleTV.com to listen to it or our Discord server. I'm out of here. Talk to you later, guys. <laughs>